Hello and welcome to Scrolling Around. I'm Alexis Ware. And I'm Rachel Baker. We have a lot in store for you all this week. Isn't that right, Rachel? That's right. Uh, this week, I interviewed the director of Brain Balance in Oxford, Ms. Carrie Odrabina. Brain Balance is a business that plans to help students with cognitive disorders to be more successful at school. They create individualized plans for each client they work with. Let's see what she has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brain Balance in, in South Washington Street in Oxford. I'm speaking here to the di two directors, Ms. Carrie Odrabina and Mr. Larry Hawkman. So I'd like to start out, what do you guys do here at Brain Balance and what are your goals? Well, essentially we're a supplemental learning center, so we're an after-school program that works to serve kids who are struggling, and they might be struggling academically, behaviorally, or socially. They're having learning difficulties, whether it's because, you know, they, they have learning disabilities, or they're just having trouble remembering and retaining information, or they might have behaviors. Um, diagnosis isn't important for the kids we help. Every kid is unique. Um, they're all individuals. Um, so we're, we're really, we start with an assessment here at Brain Balance and learn what we need to about how their brain is developing and what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses. Um, we're not born with a thinking brain. Our brain has just-in-time development and we all have our strengths and weaknesses, but we all develop the same way. And so there are developmental milestones um, that are critical for all of us. And when those start to um, get off track, when things happen and development isn't happening the way it should, um, it can create maturity issues, it can create imbalances between the two hemispheres of the brain, and that leads to the child not being able to process information the way they should to reach their potential. And what do you guys do to help bridge those gaps in the brain? Well, we do so many um, exercises that I don't know that you'll see anywhere else. Um, we do sensory motor exercises. We do um, visual exercises. We do olfactory exercises. We do auditory. And we pair them with academic training, academic learning, so that all of the elements that a kid needs, that a child needs to succeed in school become integrated and rather than just seeing little bits and pieces here and there, we build the whole student, we integrate all of their talents, we address their weaknesses and, and we send kids off ready to succeed in a way that they've never really experienced before. It's a very holistic, all natural program, um, so yeah. <laughs> and so the, the kind of students that you train here have uh, cognitive disorders or learning disabilities. If let's say there's a parent at home and they're recognizing that their kid is struggling but they're not really sure if it is a neurocognitive disorder yet and they haven't gotten a diagnosis, what can they do? What would you recommend? What would you say to them? Well, every student is, is unique and when parents know better than anybody when their child is struggling, um, whether they have a diagnosis or not. And it, there's an epidemic rise in all areas of neurodevelopmental disorders. Everything from learning disabilities, uh, dyslexia, dysgraphia, processing speed issues, sensory issues, um, ADD, ADHD, spectrum disorders, childhood anxiety, those are all neurodevelopmental issues. And so to address them appropriately and get things back on track and get everything functioning the way it should, it's really under important to have that initial assessment to see where the weaknesses are. And like Larry said, we're looking at all of those individual pieces, all of those sensory pieces, those visual pieces, um, auditory, olfactory, sense of smell, sense of touch. A lot of kids who are struggling, you know, they have sensitivities. They're hypersensitive to noise, you know, they're, they're um, to touch. You know, those are the kids that the tags are bothering them or they're having a, a meltdown if the, their socks turned wrong and, you know, the seam's not right or they don't want to wear jeans because they're, they hurt or they're too tight. So all of those sensory issues are symptoms of something going on developmentally. Gotcha. All right. Well, what would you how do you guys integrate cuz you were talking about how the bridging the gaps and you also mm -hmm. implement academics into this as well. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do you uh, train a kid to overcome their 
their weaknesses also on an academic front as well as developmentally. Can I start? Yes, please do. Okay. <laughs> so there's a really good visual. You know, none of us are born with a thinking brain. The brain has just in time development. And as we develop, um, we're creating neural pathways and connections in the brain that mature that brain to an age-appropriate level and give us a teachable brain. So, you know, for you to be successful in third grade, your brain needs to be matured to an eight or nine-year-old level. And so think about an immature brain, a newborn brain like a rock. You know, it doesn't have all those mm -hmm. neural pathways and connections that it needs. And so if you're, you know, if if development gets off and pockets of the, the brain stay immature, then when we try to pour second grade or seventh grade or twelfth grade content over it, it's like water over a rock. It's splashing off. And so those are the kids that are frustrated. They have to, you know, be exposed to things over and over and the parents spend hours on homework trying to help their child learn because they know it's not coming easily. And, and just when they think they have it, that now they go in the next day for that test and it's gone again. And so what's going on is that brain isn't developed to an appropriate level. It's not the sponge that it needs to be to pull in and retain this information and be able to squeeze it out when you need it. Right? And so we're really looking at where are those areas of immaturity. And what we do here at Brain Balance is we create the sponge. We create that teachable brain. And so when you re-expose, once the, once the capacity is there and you re-expose the child now that they're ready for it to that academic material that they couldn't master previously, now it's like, oh yeah, no problem right and so the academic part of how do we you know remediate is as part of our program you know we're doing the sensory motor integration and we're doing the, the sensory motor development and we're working on everything from core strength and, and gross motor to fine motor and you know coordination and rhythm and timing and all of those physical aspects develop the brain and because we're doing it in a very strategic way that's individual individualized to what each child needs but at the same time you know we've already we've also assessed them academically and so now we're re-exposing them to the things that they weren't previously able to master and, and with that I think we'll take a break and that back we'll toss it back to Alexis and her OELC interview but stay tuned for next week with more from Larry and Carrie at Brain Balance Hi guys, I'm here at Oxford Early Learning Center. Today is the three and four year olds first day of school. So I'm gonna go talk to some of them as well as some of the teachers and see all the cool things they have planned for today. from a teacher's perspective? The first day was really good. We didn't have anybody cry this morning, which is amazing because you usually have one or two criers. They don't want mom to leave. Right? That's normal. Um, it was amazing. They did really well. They caught on to the routine. Had a lot of really good listeners. We had um, a good time at work time today, which was our play time. And um, yeah, overall, it was just, it was a really good day. I was very pleased, very pleased. Great, and I heard you mention, mention the routine. So what is a normal daily routine like? Uh, our normal daily routine is we start our day, where do we start our day, Maya? Um, out. Out. Outside. Outside. Yep, we start our day outside. That way, if parents are running a little bit late, then they don't really miss anything. Um, and with our program, we come in and we have breakfast. Um, we do message board, which is when we talk about what's gonna go on during the day. Then we go back to our tables and we do a small group, which is like our small group learning time, where we kind of do most of our um, learning. And today for small group, we did, we explored, what area did we explore? Um, the block area. In the house area. Art, art area. Yeah. In the art area. Um, and then we do what we call a play and do review, which is we make a plan where, where we want to play. And then they go play. They have an hour of free play time. And then we clean up and then we come back and we talk about what we did. Um, then we have lunch. Then we rest for an hour. Then what do we do after we rest? Do you remember? Um, we 
eat snack. We eat snack. And then we do a large group, a small group, and then we come out outside. outside. And who, where, who picks us up from outside? Our parents. Our parents pick us up from outside. Yeah, so that's, it's a long day. It's a busy, busy day. You want to hold it a little bit, you can hold it with Yeah. Me. So, how was your first day? I was good. It was good. What did you do all day? I waited at school and I go outside and I eat breakfast and I take a nap in and I eat lunch. Wow, was the, all that fun? What did you have for lunch today? I had it, um, we had it, uh, we had a chicken nuggets. Oh, those are good. Apples. And, and we had a vegetables. Wow. And did you eat your vegetables? Yeah. You did? High yeah. five. So how was your first day of school? Good. Did you like school today? Yes. Why did you like school? Yeah, I did. Because you did. Okay, so what's your favorite thing to do in school? Um, like do cards and do people. What was that? New people. New people? Oh, that's fun. Did you meet any new friends? Yeah. How many? Um, like, we my best friends. Oh, cool. Did you play on the playground with them? Yes. What's your favorite thing to do on the playground? So Nicholas, how was your first day of school? Good. I found a What'd you do today? I eat the breakfast and then I played a little bit. And then I go to bed. And then I was at home. and my, then my mother put pick just put me in here. <laughs> and then my mom and then my mom was all gone and I was at school. Did you like school? Was it fun? Mm -hmm. Why do you like school? Because that's my favorite thing to do. Whoa, good job. So what's your favorite thing to do at school? I like to play in the park. What's your favorite thing to do on the park? In the park? I spin around. Okay, cool. Ms. Pat, what is your official title? My name is Pat Mueller. I'm the education coordinator here at OELC. And what is your overall uh, job description? Oh my word, when you're working with children, it's everything all the time. Um, I enroll for many of our preschool programs, especially our off-site preschool programs. And I do curriculum training and supporting teachers so that they know what they're doing in the classroom and have the support to do it well. Right, okay. And then I noticed you said curriculum. So what kind of curriculums? I know it's a few different grade levels here. So let's start with the first day students. <laughs> what is their curriculum? Actually, it, we're interesting in that way. All of our programs, whether they're infants and toddlers, whether they're school age kids, or whether they're preschoolers, we use the high scope approach with all of these students. Okay. It's basically based on the idea that all, ch all people and children especially, learn when they're actively engaged in their environment with well-trained teachers in small group sizes. This is what helps children to learn how to learn. If we need to know how to learn, this is the time to do it when they're very young. So what kind of um, learning goals do you set out for the year? Actually, we have a thing called KDIs, and KDIs are key developmental indicators, and they're actually in... 10 different areas, math and science, language, literacy, social, emotional, um, social studies, uh, and science. Okay. Um, and all of those are wonderful because they dovetail with our second curriculum, which is actually IB. We're at International Baccalaureate School as well, so we're part of the continuum here at Oxford Schools in using that approach. So when students first come through the doors um, at the Early Learning Center, what age are they typically, and then what age do they exit? 
You know, I would say that the majority of our students start when they're young preschoolers. And then, but we do have infant and toddler programs. We're just, we're not a huge infant and toddler provider. By the time we're done with extended day and going all the way to fifth grade, we have a, a great number of students, 400 students. So you said extended day. Is it all all day classes or do you have some you know day? extended day is um, what happens after elementary school and before okay. so parents drop their their student off at um, Daniel Axford or Leonard or any of our elementary schools they stay with the, with a teacher in that group go to school and then many of them return after so also, you know, in addition to the learning environment, like the classrooms, do you offer latchkey or after school, anything like that? Well, l after school and extended day are the same. Okay. 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 So, and it, it's formerly called latchkey. Now we call it extended day because it's not really a whole different program. We're really just extending their day. So, because we want them to have something meaningful to do while they're here. And okay. there are children in our in our preschool classroom we have a number of different programs you talked about this so the first program we have is probably we have all day infant and toddlers okay there's a total of 12 all together not a huge program then we have a half day preschool program that program meets anywhere from 6 a.m. to noon typically somewhere around 8 if parents start bringing their kids in then we have a full day three and four year old blend so kind of the older threes, younger fours are together in one class. Um, and then we have a full day three-year-old program. And then we have a full day four-year-old program. And then we have five, four, five full day programs in the elementary schools. Oh, okay. I know, that's a lot of preschoolers. That is, and it's actually a good thing because it sounds like these classes are a lot smaller and intimate, so it's a lot of hands-on, one-on-one attention. And, that's, and we know that that's what really supports children's learning and so that's what we go for right. yeah. okay and then do I I know you saw or you told me um, there was classes in the back so can there we, is yeah. you want to tour the building yes please you? Yes. oh my gosh I love tour. I'm so excited to show you the block area here in room three at and I'm OBLC. excited to hear it <laughs> this is so perfect um, we have, this is the block area. The block area is really where a lot of that math and science kind of stuff takes place. You can see that there's items to build with and items to build around. It takes a lot of thinking on the part of a young child to figure out how you can make a garage big enough for that car. It seems really simple to us, but that's where the beginning of math and geometry begins. You'll notice that there's books, and these books help children to get ideas about how they might be able to build something and how to put things together. The other thing you might notice is lots and lots of texture. So you see some metal and you see some fabric and you see in, in fiber and then you also see some wood. We want to make, and plastic, so we want to make sure that children are having a multitude of different materials to use because they sound different, feel different, have different weights. And when our teachers are supporting children during their exploration of these materials, they bring those things up. And this helps children to learn math. And then if we move over to this bookshelf, what is the, the meaning behind these blocks? <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. Interestingly enough, these are called unit blocks. Two, uh, two of these will equal one of these. Two of these equal one of those. And two of those will equal one of those. So this it's, is math. It's math. It's actually fractions. It's fractions in a way that children understand them. And what happens is, is when they have the underpinnings for understanding fractions when they're three and four, even two, they really can understand it when it gets to be second grade. Right, the harder because stuff. They, because they've had the experience with actually putting fractions together. And just on the opposite side of our, our math blocks, <laughs> we have our um, house area. The house area is everyone's favorite. Not everyone's favorite. I bet you, I bet you if you asked anybody what was their favorite thing about school, it was going to be dress up. Dress up is always a fun time. You have to think about everything that goes into dress up. It has to do with community. 
you play in different roles. It's actually social studies in a box. When you and you don't really think of dress up as being social studies, right. but it really is. The other thing it does is it helps children to understand how to um, fasten buttons, mm -hmm. how to zip, how to put clothes on and off. So it's basic everyday skills yes. as well as social studies. I know. Wow. Well, because getting dressed by yourself is a social skill. I know you don't think. I know you don't think about social really studies know. like that. It's kind of we really gave us a lot of thought. Um, the other thing that you'll see over here is the kitchen area, Ki the whole kitchen cooking, and that kind of thing. You'll notice that there's recipe cards and menus and items like that, and we want that because that gives kids ideas of what they can make, and it also brings math into the house area. Just like pretend play is part of the block area, math is part of the pretend play. So then it's a lot of core subjects in like such a tiny classroom for two and three year olds, even four. Yeah. Right along this wall, we have the, the map of the United States. So what is this about? You know what's interesting about this? This is actually geography. And you know what it is? It's meaningful to kids because do you know where grandma lives? Grandma lives... It, 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 Grandma lives in Florida, and that's where Disney is. And then my other grandma lives in New York, and they figure this out, and they and they look at these different colors, and they can identify that they're different states. Right. They may not be able to say everything there is to say about them, but by the time they get to a place where maps are used in a more traditional way, they should have an underpinning of understanding of what they're used for. And why are they important? Great. And I keep going to the, back to the fact that this is all early learning. This is before, These you know. Four-year-olds. <laughs> I know. You don't even think about it. Uh, other things that you'll see over here this in the toy area, you see puzzles and you see lots of things to do with your spine motor and your little muscles. And that's really what, the, what this is. That's what this whole area is made up of. So things like um, the, the latch puzzles and putting together the bears and sticks and figuring out how to get the blocks to stick together, that kind of thing. Lots and lots of problem solving over here. The, these are the engineers of America sit here. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the coolest thing that I've seen thus far in the classroom. I mentioned this as soon as I walked in the door, a little mailbox. Isn't that cute? It's part of the writing area. Writing is something that we kind of take for granted. It doesn't just happen. People write because it's something important to write about. So writing a letter to someone. We have kids who are writing checks. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that cute? They write checks, yeah. um, which I thought was crazy. I didn't yes. know people did that anymore. But um, they write checks, and they also send people invitations, mm -hmm. lots of invitations and cards. This is really cool because, I mean, you've mentioned every other core subject that I know of. <laughs> so this is also English language, language arts. arts. Yeah, it's language arts. Oh. You're, you're correct. Also, language arts is behind you. This is the art area. The art area has more things to write with, to use to communicate. These are, this is the whole communication part of the room. So it's reading, books, writing. And all of that is in this part of the room because we want to make sure the kids have the opportunity to use these things in a meaningful way. And, I mean, we're over here in the writing area, the English area, so to speak. We can't forget about this little guy in the tank right here. What is right? his name? His name changes every year. <laughs> <laughs> so there will be a vote. Okay. Um, it's part of the big voting day. Um, I, they've called him Blondie. They've called him Fishy. They called him Tails one year. So I know. So there, he has lots and lots of different. You know what? I think I might spot the big importance of, you know, naming the fish. It teaches them decision making. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, decision making. <laughs> and the fact that things might not always go your way, but it's still okay, right? And it's making group decisions. Yeah. You notice that when we were over here and we talk about the message, you notice all the kids have, they, they vote with their names all the time right. because that's, that, that's, it's meaningful. It's a meaningful vote. What do you want to name this fish? I want to name this fish Spot. Yes. Yeah. Or what? <laughs> that, was a, that was a contender one wow, time. Okay. 
<laughs> so, yeah, right? So you get those ideas, and kids start to be able to think about what this language means. The other thing is it's kind of fun to draw a fish. Looking at the fish, fish right while you're drawing it, you know, you know. And it makes a noise. Mm-hmm. So you have more and more of that sensory and... Um, <laughs> yeah, just skills in general. Right. So we're just going to head out the door. I am so glad you visited today. Thank you so much for coming by. It makes me so excited to share our programs with you. It was so much fun getting a tour of the classrooms. I can't wait to see the rest. But for now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, Rachel Baker. we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now, as it happens, from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station. Text TV to 52886 today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oxford Middle School, where tonight, band and orchestra students will get their very first rental instrument. Let's go and talk to some people. And what's your name? Alyssa. Alyssa, and we have met on two other occasions, the Oxford Parade in the winter, and then the Seymour Lake Festival, what was that? That last one? Um, when we were at the Queen Pusher, and like we had the same person doing the camera, too. I've interviewed her twice already, ladies and gentlemen, so I just ran into you today by chance. So what are you getting here today? Flute. Flute, and you're just starting? Yeah. All right, what made you do the flute? My sister. She played? Yeah. And how long has she played? Um, Mom, how long has Katie played flute? How long years. has she been two years? Mm-hmm. Two years. She's, she's played, so your sister's played for two years. Wow, okay. So are you excited? Yeah. All right, thanks for talking to me, Alyssa. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. See. Which we will probably run into each other in like... So we're talking to the Oxford High School and Middle School Orchestra conductors. So I'm going to ta- start with you, Ms. Frakes, the high school conductor. Um, what are you doing representing here? What's going on tonight? Tonight we have our Ashar Rental Night, which is for um, all the elementary instrumental programs that we offer here in Oxford. And we are here for first year orchestra and for? Second year orchestra. So how long have you been? I know that you uh, replaced Mr. Benjamin when he left. So how many years have you been at the middle school? We have a great tradition here in Oxford for orchestras. And um, myself and Ms. Frakes, we've both been here for, this is our fourth year. And uh, we're lucky to be here. And we're really excited about all these new students joining this fall. All right, and how is your orchestra program as a whole? If you said, in general, is it big? Is it growing, getting better, or...? It's been growing over the past four years. Um, We are very fortunate to be able to start students at the fourth grade level, which is really unheard of in most programs in the state. Um, We have our first year orchestra, which is offered to fourth and fifth graders uh, who have never played a string instrument before. We also offer Suzuki violin and guitar, which is a very, very unique program here um, where we offer pull-out classes um, with trained Suzuki instrumentalists and um, they can continue in our orchestra program and hopefully go all the way up through the middle school with Mr. Berezhny who's a fantastic teacher and he's been doing an awesome job and then um, I get his awesome students at the high school and I have to barely do any work because he's done all of it so <laughs> you both are great musicians thank you for talking to me Mr. Berezhny and Ms. Frakes thanks for watching Schooling Around this week I'm Rachel Baker and I'm Alexis Zoyer we'll see you next week